At this time, I'd like to introduce the head table. And on, uh, on my left, at the very end, is our 5th District First Vice Commander and the past Department Vice Commander, E. Paul Ball. Sitting next to him is the Napa City Council member, Bernie Navarance. And then our City of Napa Mayor, Scott Sedgley. And our Department of Vice Commander representing Area 1, Will Williams. And on my right is our Post 113 Commander. Robin Mueller. <laughs> Our national NEC man and past department commander, Mark, uh, Mark Foxworthy. <laughs> Our department adjutant, Barbara Lembrano. <laughs> and our national commander will be introduced in a few minutes. At this time, I'd like to call on the mayor, Sedley, for a few remarks. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you for the wonderful, wonderful lunch. Thank the, the crew and staff that brought out this delicious lunch. Those potatoes were, were just marvelous, as was my French dip. So thank you so much. Uh, it's, it's an honor to join you here. Uh, you know, this, I grew up in Napa. In, in my father and my grandfather, and so we knew a lot of the, the, the fraternal organizations, the odd fellows. I'm a native son of the Golden West, part of 62. And, and what I see is with the American Legion, the demographics age a bit, and we have to bring in the younger, like my compadre on the Napa City Council, Bernie Nervias. You know, we, we need to keep these groups alive and, and relevant in the community. And, and I think I got to know Robin uh, moving forward, and Robin's been doing a great job of working on some improvements uh, to, to make the American Legion Post Hall here just much more present in downtown Napa because we've been here a long time, provides such a critical need for our veterans. And, and I pledge as mayor to work with you moving forward to make sure that, that this, this post stays active and alive and healthy. So thank you all. Uh, safe travels, Merry Christmas, uh, and all the best. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. At this time, I'm going to call on our NEC man and past Department Commander, Mark Foxworth, Foxworth, to introduce our National Commander. Good afternoon, all. We're here in my uh, new hometown. I've been in Napa since 1985. I'm in love with this crazy place. And uh, probably will end up dying here. Not too soon, Bob. <laughs> We're here to spend some time with our commander. Born in Whitesboro, Texas, near the Oklahoma border. Proud native Texan, he attended Whitesboro High School and shortly after graduation joined the U.S. Navy, serving from 1965 to 1969. And during four campaigns, including the Tet Offensive. He later received an honorable discharge from active duty, then later serving two years in the reserves, completing his military career as a radar man, second class petty officer. Upon returning from the Navy, he attended Grayson County Junior College and East Texas State University. He was employed in the manufacturing uh, fields, uh, became a, a plant manager and director of manufacturing in Tennessee, returning to Texas, uh, later accepting a sales position with the Sherman Foundry, and became its airline pilot. So, a man of many talents. A career change was made when he and his wife Donna began their family, and he entered the insurance business, specializing in employee benefits and later forming Dillard and Gann Insurance. He joined American Legion in 1969, became a paid up for life member of American Legion Post 265 in Lake Kiowa, Texas, serving many uh, uh, positions, going through the chairs and serving as post commander. He loved American Legion baseball, coached it for 10 years, and also had a passion for Boy State, serving as post chairman. 
Legion Sir continue and include moving through the chairs of the Texas 4th District, becoming its commander. Through the department, Sergeant at Arms, membership and organization chair, national security chairman, and many other positions. Finance committee, Long Range Planning Committee. And in 2007, he was elected department commander for the great state of Texas. On the national level, he served as alternate national executive committee member, consultant to the insurance committee, distinguished guest committee, Children and Youth Committee, Media and Communications Council. He served as the Foreign Relations Committee Chairman and Chairman of the Veterans Employment and Education Commission, as well as Chairman of the Legislative Commission. So you can see that his knowledge and experience with the organization has covered essentially every facet of who we are and what we do. He was elected and served admirably as National Vice Commander in 2013. Our commander married Donna in 1983. They have two sons, William and his wife Allison, Jonathan and his wife Carrie, two grandsons, Jared and Lucas, all members of the American Legion family. Donna has been an active and dedicated member of the American Legion Auxiliary for many years, serving in a variety of leadership positions at the unit, district, department, and national levels, to include a term as department president for 2017 and 2018. Comrades, friends, guests, Paul E. Dillard was elected National Commander of the American Legion on September 2nd, 2021 in Phoenix, Arizona at our National Convention, uh, an event I was proud to attend. And his theme going on for this year is No Veteran Left Behind. Without further ado, our commander, Paul E. Dillard. Howdy, folks. Howdy. Didn't want you to stand up too long and take part of my four to five minutes until I get to talk. <laughs> yeah. Man, I hope you don't have to get back this way. Uh, I run my old schedule. All right, good. I don't run back. <laughs> I get run. <laughs> but really, it, it, it's just great fear. It's great to be in California without that stuff falling from the sky. I'm not going to say it too loud because I think it's going to come back and I won't be accused for it. I believe my brother's in here with me when I came, but I know y'all need it. So uh, we will cherish it, enjoy it, and we'll just call it Tears of Joy. <laughs> you know, because uh, you never complain about getting rain. You know, that's just a fact. You just don't, don't do that. Just do some depth it on it. Turn it off. There's a few things I would like to just visit with you about. But first of all, I want to introduce while he's eating. I was wanting to wait till I stalled until he put it right here and I was going to give him. My aide, Walter Ivey from Austin, Texas. Yep. <laughs> I like to pick on him a little bit. Barbara says, you know, y'all really ought to put a comedy act on him. But uh, we, we, you know, we got to pick at each other to try to stay sane because uh, with all the emails and all the work and after hours we have to do when we get through visiting with you folks, you'd go insane. In fact, I'd probably end up over there and you'd be working with me in one prison. <laughs> you know, but uh, uh, Walter does an awful lot for me. And really, and truthfully, somebody said where he was going from here and I said, I'm not sure. And then I thought about it, and I remembered they were talking about it this morning. Because normally I have to ask Walter every night, you know, where we're going tomorrow, and what time this, what time that. And, uh, you know, then try to read those emails, and he tries to go through the pictures. But we stay busy. We don't, it's not a vacation. You know, some people say, is it a job, a J-O-B? I said, no, it's a B-O-J, a big old job. Because, uh, you know, taking care of legion business, working, the job we do for our veterans through the legislation. I, I had read three bills this morning and, and approved it to go ahead so we could go and, and sit in on some hearings and things like that. So, you know, that's just part of the day. It just goes and it goes and it goes. And then you get three hours difference between here in Washington last week, it was five hours difference for the day. So you get the emails at three o'clock in the morning because they're there at eight, you know, so your phone lights up. So here you go to work. So, you know, it's 24-7. Uh, uh, our long stretch was 58 days. We're going from home at one shot. And uh, we'll get a little break here in a few days. You know, eight days we're going home, Mama. 
something like that, next Tuesday or Wednesday or something like that. A week from tomorrow, I think we're going. Yeah, but we hit it again first year. But a couple of things I would like to bring to your attention is, as you heard Mark say, my theme, no veteran left behind. Well, you know, that can cover a lot of areas. But one thing I really think about is veteran suicide. And that's my number one priority. And so is it the national organization's number one priority this year is to reduce our veteran suicide. You know, we started Buddy Check about three years ago, 2019, we started Buddy Check and it's really blossomed, it's grown. And a lot of posts, instead of doing it once in a great while or once a month, some are even doing it weekly now. Some are doing it a little bit more often because they find out there's veterans out there in need if it's nothing more than going getting their prescription. If it's nothing more than just hearing a voice. You know, we gotta think about that because during the last 20 odd months, 22 months or so, been a lot of isolation. A lot of veterans have been at home alone, or maybe about to drive the wife crazy. You know, uh, I don't know. Probably done run that dog around the house two or three times. But the isolation, you know, the loneliness, that could be a very trying time on that person. And that phone call might have been the time that really helped bring that person through to get them over the hump. You know, when we was in the service with a comrade, when you, when you was having a bad day, you really feel down and out, depressed, uh, you, you visit you visit with your, your buddies there and kind of get you over the hump, get you through it, and you can, you can progress from there. And that's what's so important about the buddy check. You know, we have our own bill called the buddy check bill in Congress. It's been passed by the Senate. It was passed by the first part of October, and then it was sent to the House. And it's HR 5504, it's in the House. And we're hoping that it gets on a veterans bill package by the end of the year. The Senate's kind of a little bit different version in the House, but it doesn't matter which version we get. It will be a plus because we're looking for, it basically be a national, uh, national week recognized nationally. And it will uh, contribute to our buddy check. And so we really need to ask, uh, go home, call your congressman. I talked to uh, uh, the, the chairman of Veterans Affairs, which is representative to Connor. I talked to him in October. I talked to him about it. It's nonpartisan. It doesn't cost a penny. There may be some money comes out of grants to help uh, maybe man our veterans suicide line. <laughs> You know, things like that, because they will be available <coughs> for teaching people on peer-to-peer -peer support, how to call veterans, what to look for, maybe how to handle it when you run into that situation. But we've got to, we've got to do that, folks. We, we have got to control. We've got to reduce it. You know, whether it's number of 18, whether it's 20 or 22, one is too many, too many veteran suicides. If we could just reduce it to our non-serving peers number, we could save over 3,600 lives a year. 3,600 lives a year, if we could just reduce it to non-serving peers. That's big, that's big. But we can't do it by sitting around. You know, it's, it's, it's like the song says, a lot, you know, it's time for a lot less talk, a lot more actions. We've got to proceed. We've got to do this and try to help our buddies over the hump. You know, as I said, that 18, 20, 22, just think, that suicide, it's a real, it's a real story, you know, it's a real person. It's a real story. But how many other lives does that suicide affect? The spouse, the children, the moms, the dads, other relatives. And depending on age or regardless of age, but how the suicide happened could scar some of those people for life. Could even bring them to that. That veteran wasn't thinking about doing suicide. It was just too much caving in on them at that time. And they decided to cash out without thinking, just without 
really without thinking about those people. Because had they, it would have never happened because I know those warriors and they can have a hard time, but there's a point in time that you just don't, you just don't see no, you just don't see no end. And that's only end you can, you can think works. So that phone call can save one. I've, I've talked to people, people have shared some of their, their buddy checks and there have been people who said, I know I saved a lot. I had one guy, Mississippi, Mississippi, I believe it was. He regrets it. He had a coworker that he'd been over to his house twice because he'd had problems. He'd call him and he went over, seen him every day at work, got him through it. And one evening the guy called and something come up and he didn't go. He's never seen that guy again. He took his life that evening. And he feels bad about it because he did not answer the call. That's how real it is. I mean, it can happen to all of us. And let's not forget, you know, our Afghanistan veterans, 20 year, 20 year veterans, let's call them that. You know, they've been at war for 20 years. And some of them that either already served and got out or some of those getting out now are fixed to get out. A little bit <coughs> like Vietnam veterans, they kind of look and says, was it worth it? Because it wasn't a real true end for us veterans when we get right down to it. And you know, when we come back to Vietnam, people spit on you and tell you not to wear your uniform. A lot of us didn't want to be with us veterans. But we said that's never going to happen again. The American Legion, Vietnam veterans especially said that'll never happen again. And it has to this day. But those guys and gals, they may be thinking the same thing as, as some of us thought back then because they wonder if it's worth it because was that end there? Well, if you see them, thank them for their service. And you can tell that their service was worth it because in the 20 years, there was never a major terrorist attack on U.S. soil while they were serving. So yes, service was worth it. That's the way it's been in every war. They keep us safe at home while they're over there. And that's how simple it is. So all veteran service is worth it. But be very vigilant of those folks. Welcome into the American Legion Safe Harbor Place. Visit with them. Things will come out and you can you can let them know that you do appreciate their service. So it's very, very important that we do that. Now there's some other things that that we could talk about. I don't know how much of the 45 minutes I really want to use. Ask Barbara. <laughs> oh, Barbara, tell me to keep going. I'll ask Willis. Will, Willis over here tell me I got all day. He did that last night. You missed it, see? He bought it. He got it all last night, that young man down there. World War II veteran. And let me tell you. Legion is also pushing, and we have, we didn't get any traction last year because of COVID, but the year before we got it started, World War II means test waiver. So World War II veterans waive the means test from now VA health care. It's not so much of the, of the health care, it's a thought behind the bill that makes it happen. You know, look, it's nonpartisan. The youngest is probably 94 years old, as I said, unless they really, really, really lied about their age, the youngest is probably around 94, because many of them did. And I think you went in with 16 or something, didn't you? Somewhere along there. But he's just a young age of 96. So, you know, so they really have to lie about their age, but it doesn't matter. We've only got about 240,000 live today. We've been losing around 300,000 a day. What this would do is it would waive, they could, in other words, they just sign up for VA health care. I've sat in offices of congressmen up there, and I said, listen, at 94, if they're not in the VA health care system, hell, they probably don't want any. <laughs> and more than likely, they're already in. So we're not talking about money. And it's nonpartisan. It's the right thing to do to show that greatest generation, 
that 16 million that went to war, World War II. Because, as I said up there, listen, you wouldn't be sitting here in this building and you probably wouldn't even be speaking English. So it's a right thing to do to thank them and show them America's appreciation and talk to your congressman. And I'm gonna promise you, to promise, he's already heard it because I told him this in October and I told him he wouldn't be speaking English probably. And so did, I, I told, uh, you know, Tester from Montana, Senator and Senator Moran from Kansas and also uh, Congressman both from uh, Illinois. So that's what we've got to do. We've got to ask our congressman to do what's right for veterans. Listen, I've been told by some pretty smart people, sometimes I remember things and most times I don't. Congressmen really, really are concerned about three things. Can you donate money to my campaign? No, we cannot. Can you bring jobs into my district or area? No, we cannot. Can you bring votes to the table? Yes, we can. Providing you support our initiatives and our objectives for our, our veterans. We can bring those votes. And that brings us to membership because membership is what gets us there. The more numbers, the louder my voice will be in March. When I testify around March the 2nd, first week in March, that really carries. We are the largest VSO in the world, but like I've told people before, largest don't mean, that's not the answer to everything because I always said, if large or biggest was best, Miss Americas would be elephants. But, not, they'd just be big ones. I see you frowning over there. <laughs> but, uh, the thing about it is, is when we go up there, they look at our entire family, the American Legion, the American Legion all together, the sons of the American Legion, and we get a tally vote. We know it's not just that member. How many of that member votes might they get? See, it could run up to six, seven, eight thousand or more. That gets their attention. Because when you locally ask a representative that your representative or one of your two senators for something, they really don't want to disappoint you because they're afraid it'll come right back and slap them in the back of the head because they don't know how many friends you've got. That's the reason we ask, you know, I put out a letter back in October, first of November, about the buddy check, buddy check bill. And then your National Legislative Council just got uh, about a week after that, uh, about the first of November, they got a, a legislative alert from John Cain to contact your representative. All you gotta do is throw through them. Get it, hit, send it, it's, it's gone. So that's about how hard work. That, that's hard work, isn't it? But that, that's what we, we take all the work out of it. And you just, I just put out a, a commander's message the other day about the World War II. Some of you probably read it. It came out over the email list. And uh, we also uh, uh, didn't put a, we put a legislative call to contact your representative because it's the right thing to do, and they need to take action on this while we still got these World War II veterans around. I'm fixing to close, but one other thing I do want to mention is this year, my special project is Veterans and Children's Foundation, which a veterans part is our continued education and credentializing our service officers accrediting our service officers. I got that word. Yeah. Accrediting our service officers. And in the children portion is the TFA, Temporary Financial Aid, for any veteran, for any veteran that has children under 18 for home expenses, food, utilities, things like that to keep the family together. Initially, this started in 1925. I believe it was a national uh, commander out of Washington State. They started this in 1925. That year they raised 5 
made him die in 1925 that year. It's hard to believe what they raised that year. Well, we're going to try to raise $25 million over a period of time, but we will get corporate donors, too. And uh, my goal this year is to me to try to kick it off a little bit harder. So I uh, just want to let that out so you know it's there. And I usually, you know, close this thing. I always say, has anybody got any questions? Thank you. I have no interest. <laughs> <laughs> I gave you back at least 38 minutes. <laughs> Thank you, Samantha. I hope everybody was listening, especially to keeping track of your fellow veterans, as suicide is a terrible thing. Uh, I know firsthand their pain it causes a family <clears throat> from someone committing suicide. At this time, I'm going to call on our <clears throat> First Vice Commander of the 5th District to make a presentation to the commander. Good evening, National Commander Paul Hillard, and to the fellow veterans that's here today. I'm going to read to you something that was given to me that uh, you, will, you will remember. Congressman Mike Thompson, who is a veteran, War Purple Heart Medal recipient, could not be here today to personally thank you and the entire American Legion family for supporting his effort to improve the outreach and service of all veterans and for supporting his legislation to transfer the Mary Island Naval Cemetery in Vallejo, the oldest national cemetery on the West Coast, to the National Cemetery Administration Department of Veterans Affairs. And that was from Thompson Mike Thompson. I don't have the certificate for that today, but I'm sure we'll get one. That's right. I have a, do have a little certificate here from this district, District 5. Welcome to California. Thank you for visiting the Bay Area, the North Bay, which is home of the American Legion 5th District. Thank you for visiting Travis Air Force Base, which I understand you had to cancel this morning. No, we made it. Oh, did you make it? Yes, sir. The U.S. Military Gateway to the Pacific. Thank you for visiting the Sacramento National Bank, National Cemetery. Did you get that? The one you had to cancel. At Dixon, California. It's a beautiful place. And post 113, Napa, California. This post. A grateful American Legion recognizes your continuous service and commitment to God and country, your community and the state and nation, and to the fellow veterans. A happy holiday to you on your travel. Sign the commander of the District 5, Walita Moses, which could not be here with us today, American Asian 5th District Commander. And I will give that to you along with the 5th. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anytime I get to shake hands with War II veteran, oh. it makes my day. I've been around a few years. Uh, the youngest I have met in my travels this year is 94, and so far the oldest I've got to meet is 102. Now, I missed one that I think somebody says 112. We missed him. We missed that person. But that just goes to show you. You know, there was, there was bone and gristle back then, and they still are today. <laughs> because all of them come off farms, you know, just like my dad did his World War II veteran. Many of them come off farms. And and you look at some of the uniforms you ever go up to National or you go to some of these other museums and you see those uniforms, there's over 70, 80 percent of us couldn't even get the jacket on, much less button. <laughs> For those guys, I'm serious, there was nothing but gristle and bone and they were lean, mean fighting machines. Thank you. I do have one other little thing I'd like to present at this time. 
and I was asked to do this by my commander, to, to the host commander that put this luncheon on here today for our national commander. Thank you, Paul. At this time, just uh, I'm going to call on our <clears throat> NAPA Post 113 Post Commander Robin Mueller for a presentation. First off, I want to say there's uh, little packages on the volunteers' table. Those are gifts to the volunteers from me. Thank you so much for showing up in force and really making this. <laughs> And thank you for taking care for such a wonderful job they did on uh, this luncheon. Please bring them all out. Bring that paratrooper out. God of all, grant us safe journey as we leave this gathering. Keep us true to our principles and strong in our resolve to be a welcoming body to veterans and their families and a resource to our community here in Napa and our communities throughout the nation. In peace and goodwill, amen. amen. Please cover, you can be seated for a second. <coughs> 
Once again, thank you for Commander for visiting Post 113 in the Mighty Fish District. Uh, wish you well in your future travels, especially going around the state of California with our bad weather this, this time of year. But we need the rain bad. Uh, this concludes our program. I'd like to thank everyone for attending and have a safe trip home. Big thank you to our Master of Ceremonies, Distinguished yeah. Guest Chairman, Robert Madsen.